Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the uh, the quarantine edition, uh, the quarantine lockdown edition of the bathtub. We're doing some top ten lists that uh, have completely gotten out of hand. Uh, we we here in San Luis Obispo, uh, uh, my life has been radically changed by the coronavirus. It used to be I would sit around the house, reading, writing, and sometimes doing these stupid videos. And ever since the coronavirus, I have to do the exact same thing. I Basically, I do the exact same thing every day. Um, I'm the master bather. I've been master bathing since I was 12, but I didn't get really good at it till I was 14 or 15. And we've been doing these top 10 lists for you guys. So I always need a drink after I take that thing off. I can't breathe. The... Uh, We've been doing these top 10 lists, which have completely gotten out of hand. I mean, I, I think I had 14 people on one list and 13, and I added another person next week. So I thought what I wanted to do was I was thinking that the top 10 list I would kind of like for lockdown, and a few people have mentioned, was was like bet, great short story writers. You know, we don't, we don't talk as much. I have a few people out there who love short stories as much as I do, and short stories are probably my favorite uh, literary genre i guess or type of writing i love great short story writers and i like being a short story writer and uh so i started to put together a top 10 list of my favorite 10 books of short stories and i basically end up with like 35 or 40 and i think i'm still coming up with them so here's the premise we're going to do a top 10 list of great short story collections until I run out of favorite short story collections. There's just too many of them, okay? And every time I come up with, I start to quit. See, I'm seeing three or four now. I didn't put on any of my lists yet. So today we're going to do a top 10 list, and we'll probably do a, a few more until this coronavirus deal just kind of fades away. And I wanted to start off with, so the premise, we have two premises. One is we're going for short story writers who have been writing short stories for long periods of time. And the premise is not really just to pick one short story collection or to avoid, we talked about this when we talked about Nabokov a while back. I pissed off a few people, and I don't care, which is that I suggested that you'd be better off with Nabokov's, Nabokov's quartet than you would be with the collected stories of Nabokov. Okay, it's a great deal. We all, I buy these books because, you know, it saves me having, it makes room on the shelves and stuff. But there's something about the single author collection, which is the way the short story should be read. So rather than suggest the great the collected stories of Nabokov, which I find I find it exhausting to read books like that, and particularly his books, I would suggest his short stories. And I put this in at number ten because I love many of his short stories, particularly some of the stories in Nabokov's. Uh, oh, this is Nabokov's dozen. There's Nabokov's quartet too as well. Um, so I would go for the short stories in individual formats that he selected himself and translated himself and put and brought out individually because they're just a short story is pretty dense and 12 good stories take a lot of attention as far as I'm concerned you know reading one or two a day so number 10 I'm putting the buck off in there he's I, I think he's got lots of wonderful short stories but at the same time I don't I think his novel he's more of a novelist number nine I'm going to break the rule I just made you, which is I'm trying to say just go for single author collections. And we're going for single author collections by authors who've written lots of them. So basically, if you buy any T.C. Boyle single author collection over the past 30 years, going all the way back to Descent of Man or one of his recent ones like the Relive Box, they're usually about two to 300 pages. There's 10 to 12 stories written over the past few years. And when Boyle writes a collection of stories and brings them out, all the stories are good. I can't think of one particular story that's better than another one. So most of his books are great. So short story, any short story collection by, by T.C. Boyle would definitely go on a top ten list. Ignore the rankings, by the way. These are totally arbitrary. This is an interesting big break you know, kind of compendium of it. It collects like six or five or six collections of Boyle stories plus another dozen stories that weren't in other books. This is kind of a, one of break, kind of breaks the rule I set myself already, which is avoid the big giant collections. But what I like about this is in one volume, you have each of the last five or six collections of stories, Wild Child or uh, After the Plague or Tooth and Claw. These were collections that came out as individual collections of stories every few years. 
but they're all put together and they still have the integrity of the original collection. I think that's a good deal. So I kind of would, I've already broken my rule. All right, so TC Boyle will be number nine, but but who cares what, what it is. Number eight, we're trying to mix these up. Robert Silverberg. I, I, Again, he's a perfect example of somebody I'm thinking about now. I think we're really getting someone like Boyle or Silverberg. Robert Silverberg wrote lots of short stories, particularly in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I don't think I ever read a bad Robert Silverberg story. They're really good. He wrote a lot of novels, which don't, I, I didn't like his, not a lot of his novels as much. But his short stories are great. And almost any collection you buy of his will be good. This one, I think, has... The Passengers, which is one of his darker stories, Passen The Passengers. And I picked this one. My choice would be The Reality Trip. Again, don't get a collected stories of Silverberg. Don't get the best of any of these writers. Get the individual collection that they brought out at certain points of their career. They gave it a shape. They selected the stories to fit that volume. And this one I particularly picked because it has a novella of his called Hawksbill Station which I've read every 10 years or so and enjoyed every time. I don't know why I liked it. It's about a bunch of prisoners or political prisoners who get sent back to the, to the, to the prehistoric times at, and their punishment is they can never come back to their own time or something. I don't know. I, I like that story a lot. And it's quite haunting. Almost every story he wrote is good. And particularly 60s, 70s, and 80s. That's just another random one. Moon Ferns and Star Songs. He must have two dozen collections of stories. Number eight, Robert Silverberg. Okay, again, this is no, the ranking makes no sense here. We've talked about many of these writers. Maupassant, one of my all-time favorite story writers. Every time I put a list together, he was at number one, or he was number two, or then he was 10, and he was, you know, I just can't figure out where the hell to put him. One of the writers I come back to over and over. We talked about, this is the newest Penguin edition of a collection of his stories, called A Parisian Affairs, perfectly good collection, not my favorite. It doesn't have the best version of the Horlack in it. The selections are okay. They're good. They're good standard collection. I went back. I have, I have lots of different editions of Maupassant. I read them every, you know, sometimes every few months. I love these old penguins. These are pretty old 50s penguins. Edited, they're translated by Sloman, someone named Sloman. The translations were good. All the translations are fine that I've read. I wouldn't know good from bad myself, but they're good stories. I like these three collections because they really mix them up. So you have the kind of horror stories, and there's a lot of good ghost stories in Maupassant, from the, just the stories of infidelity to the humor stories to the short, punchy stories with the surprise endings. One of the darkest, funniest writers. If you haven't read Maupassant, you could spend a whole lockdown just reading all of his stuff, and he's got lots and lots of wonderful stuff. So I just put him arbitrarily at seven, but I could put him up at number one or top ten, uh, beyond one. He's one of the greatest. Kate Wilhelm. Okay, I'm putting these in just basically as I find them on the shelves. We talked about Kate Wilhelm. I like this particularly because of the collection. Again, another writer, she wrote, she published a dozen or more collections of short stories at different periods of her career. This is an early one. It has some of my favorite Wilhelm stories and very difficult stories sometimes. She, her stuff really sneaks up on you. She's a complicated writer. Windsong is one of my favorite anti-war stories. It's a brilliant and very complex story. And her famous story, The Passengers and The Downstairs Room, which is a very kind of Shirley... She reminds me a bit of Shirley Jackson sometimes. Anyway, Kate Wilhelm stuff is always good very under under unknown not she deserves to be, be better known than she is particularly the short story so kate wilhelm and get the individual collections okay here's a here's a good example of what i get a little nervous about here's the most standard collection of raymond carver raymond carver i put up at five he could be number one as well one of the writers i come back to over and over i use him in classes more and more i've used him for years in classes because he's just so perfect technically where I'm calling from is a kind of late career retrospective. He brings back lots of his stories from previous books. He revises some of them, blah, blah. This is kind of the sort of book that's a very good book. It's a kind of a career spanning retrospective. And I'm trying to avoid these as, as a recommendations. Here's an edition of Carver that I think is a great edition that you should probably try to find. You can probably get it cheap on eBay. It's called The Stories of Raymond Carver. 
that came out from Picador in the United Kingdom or in England sometime in the mid, mid to early 80s when Carver was just starting to take off. It contains his first three collections of stories. I mean, so you see the integrity of the individual collections, which have their own histories and some controversies, particularly over the second collection. And, and those three collections, I forget, are um, you, will, will you please be quiet, please? And what do we talk about? We talk about love and cathedral. Three complete collections. They have their own integrity. They retain that integrity of the collections. And they really read well as individual books. So I love this book here, and I would really recommend, if you love Carver, I would prefer that to this. And even though some of these are revisions of those earlier stories, um, that's my particular choice. Um, here's another one. We've talked about all these writers in the past. Again, Thomas M. Dish, Getting Into Death. <laughs> you know, from the first title of every Dish story to the last words. They're an intelligence and a sense of humor and a, just a brilliant guy. Getting Into Death is one of his is one of his mid year mid career collections. There's so many great Tom Dish collections. I would I would recommend any of them. And I'm just putting these up as kind of tokens so you can pick any one you want. He never put he never produced a bad collection of short stories. There is a kind of a you know there's a cup there may be one or two of the best of Tom Dish sort of books, but just get just get the individual collections because you miss all the stuff that kind of gets lost in the in the shuffle. Uh, so Tom Dish, we put in at four. Here's another uh, problem book for me. I'm breaking all my rules every single time I start. I get going. John Cheever. Here's a book that many of us, I think, we call it. Uh, people used to refer to it as just the little red book as a kind of joke, but this is a collection of the stories of John Cheever. It was pretty much a collected story that came out when I was very young in the early 70s. Oh, no, late, first, yeah, 1980 was the original paperback of this. And I remember when this came out, I had heard of Cheever, I'd read stories here and there, and I, it was a collected stories that I actually started from the beginning and just read straight through over a week or two. This is one of my all-time favorite books of stories. I'm breaking my rule here. You could go back and read the individual collections, which is probably just as wise, but I love that book. And it's a terrific, it's got all his stories in it over an amazing career of a very strange, unpredictable, peculiar prose writer who I like a lot. This is another edition of the Library of America, which is the collected stories and other writings. So which one to get? Here's one where I just can't decide which one to keep. I keep selling this one and getting it again because it's just it is the book that i love cheever but that at the same time i picked this up a few years ago and it, it contains a lot of uncollected early stories and i really liked a lot of that early stuff and it has a few essays and reviews and so forth so it's one where you kind of it's i don't know which one to choose okay uh we're getting close to number two so it's getting drum roll who, who is going to win this 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 totally pointless competition because all this stuff is really great. Ch Chekhov, I go back to Chekhov over and over again over my life. Love his stuff. Which ones to buy? Basically, he wrote so many good stories that you have to kind of. I, I kind of prefer these old Penguin editions that would have come out in the fifties and sixties. Most of them are translated by David Magershack. I think they're wonderful. I remember reading they read, read, read they read well lady with lapdog and, and the kiss the duel there's a Nabokov and Nabokov story which is a takeoff of the duel and basically these are nice because they mix up the shorter stories so he wrote a lot of very short kind of punchy stories like 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 Malpasant. and then these longer darker uh, more more involving novellas such as Ward Six, which is an incredible story, or The Duel, or My Life. Uh, I, I love this collection because you get these five or six old penguins, and you pretty much have most of the best stories. All right, so you can't do wrong with those selections. I have also mentioned, I think, I collected over the years the original uh, Constance Garnett collections. Uh, when she was originally translating all these great Russian writers. She just basically translated everything over a period of 10 or 20 years as one. She's been 
been maligned and criticized ever since for being a bad... She, she was not an expert in Russian, I guess. She just did it out of love. And uh, here's here's four or five of them. You can get these first editions for almost nothing on, on eBay. Uh, here's the chorus girl. It's the collected Chekhov uh, short stories. And it contains the odd bits and stories that aren't in all the best of collections and other various translations. And you have about 10 or 12 volumes and they're just all wonderful. You can't, you never, you never get disappointed when you read any Chekhov story, which is why it's kind of nice to have the whole set. Finally, drum roll number one for today, because we're going to do another top, top 10 list really soon. My, one of my all time favorite short story writers is the great Richard Yates. Uh, first collection of stories is 11 Kinds of Loneliness. We've talked about him in the Bathtub Hall of Fame, all Bathtub Hall of Fame. Liars in Love, great title, one of my favorite short story collections. And here I break the rule again. I say, don't, don't take the best of or the complete editions or the so forth. The collected stories of Richard Yates, another one of these exceptions. This has got the first two collections and another five or six stories that for some reason he didn't want published. And they're all great. <laughs> I've never read, there's not a bad story in this book. So, depending on what kind of shelf space you have, every story in here is worth reading. My favorite, probably my favorite American short story writer over the past 50 years, the one I've, I've, I've gone back to most often. There's so many that I love. But Richard Yates' is Collected Stories. Or go back and get those original collections. Okay, so that's just the first top 10 list. We're going to do two or three more because I've left out so many short story writers that I love. And I love as much as many of these writers. So for your lockdown, basically any collection by single author collection chosen by the author during their career um, of any of these writers, you should have a really good time. I don't think any of them produced a bad collection of stories. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, take care of yourselves. Happy bathing. Uh, master bathe as much as possible. It's the best. Coronavirus is a good time for master bathing. And we'll talk to you all soon. Happy, uh, happy quarantine. Okay, bye.